Hello, and everyone, and welcome to the Rails Board meeting. I'm Michael Campbell, President of the Rails Board. This is Friday, January 15th, 2021. And I call this meeting to order at 1 p.m. Emily, will you please call roll? Sure. Sue Busenberg. Here. Michael Campbell. Here. Here. Do I? Oh. Ellie Cox. Here. Percy Harris. Diane Hollister. Here. Chris Kenny. Here. Sarah McCone Chase. Here. Jennifer McIntosh. Here. Paul Mills. Here. Jenna McLuisi. Here. Scott Poynton. Here. Becky Spratford. Here. Thomas Stagg. Here. Beth Teppen. Here. Alex Vancina. Here. Thank you, Emily. In accordance with the Government Emergency Administrative Act number PA 100-0640, the Rails Board of Directors finds an in-person meeting is not practical or prudent and believes it is in the best interest of Rails to hold a virtual meeting to perform essential business. Everyone, please remember to unmute yourself before you speak and say your name when making a motion or comment. All votes will be by roll call. Thank you. Also, um, this is new. In order to apply, comply with the Open Meetings Act, the private chat feature in Zoom is disabled. Please note that we would prefer you contribute your comments verbally to all the meeting participants. If you do use the public chat feature, please keep comments or questions to the business at hand and note that those questions and comments may be read aloud. Thank you. And I might add, Emily, will you please read those comments aloud? Because we do not see those comments here. Absolutely. Everyone, please remember to unmute yourself before you speak and say your name when making a motion or a comment. All votes will be by roll call. We will handle guests and public comments at this time. Let's start with guests here in Burr Ridge, and I'll ask Dee to start. Yes, Deirdre Brennan, Rails. Monica Harris, Rails. Okay. Uh, any um, guests in East Peoria? Kendall Orison, Rails. Okay. Uh, the Illinois State Library. Greg McCormick. Karen Egan. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Greg Emily, will you read there. the. Okay. Correct. Emily, any other names? Any other guests that we have? Yes. On Zoom, we have. Mary Witt, Nicole Zimmerman, Dan Bostrom, Mark Hatch, Brian Smith, Jody Rubel, Brian Hubble, Joe Philippeck, Gwen Harrison, and Ann Slaughter. Did I miss anyone? Jim Krieger is Jim on Krieger. also. Sorry, Jim. If Emily has not read your name, please state your name and your affiliation and put it in Zoom so that we can read it and add it to the minutes of the meeting. Emily, did you receive any comments via email? I received no public comments. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on. Um, To, um, oh, let me skip some here. Yep. Missed a page there. Okay, on to the consent agenda. Um, yeah. Just turn over the page here. Oh, Thank okay. you. Um, which uh, includes the items listed below. Uh, would anyone wish to move any of the items to the regular agenda for further discussion? 
So this is Scott. Uh, I would like to make a motion to relocate the closed session minutes uh, to the regular agenda and take them out of the consent agenda. Do I, uh, that's moved by Scott. Do I hear a second for that? Paul Mills second. Emily, will you please uh, call roll? Sue Busenbark. Uh, yes. Kelly Cox. Yes. Percy Harris. Diane Hollister. Yes. Chris Kenny. Yes. Sarah McCone Chase. Yes. Jennifer McIntosh. Yes. Paul Mills. Yes. Jennifer McLuisi. Scott yes. Clinton. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Becky Spratford. Yes. Thomas Stagg. Yes. Beth Tepin. Yes. Alex Bencina. Yes. Michael Campbell. Yes. Okay, so um, now we'll go back to the consent agenda. Um, do we have a motion to accept uh, the consent agenda? This is Scott. I'll make a motion that we accept the consent agenda as as uh, revised. I'll second. This is Hallie. Emily, will you call roll, please? Sure. Hallie Cox. Yes. Diane Hollister. Yes. Chris Kenny. Yes. Sarah McCone Chase. Yes, sorry. McIntosh. Yes. Paul Mills. Yes. Jenna McLuisi. Yes. Scott Poynton. Yes. Becky Spratford. Yes. Thomas Stagg. Yes. Beth Teppen. Yes. Alex Vancina. Yes. Sue Busenbark. Yes. Michael Campbell. Yes. Okay. So we'll move on to item number six, which is the Rails financial report uh, with Jim Krager. Good afternoon, this is Jim. Um, I'll give the highlights. Uh, we've attached the reports for November and December of 2020. I'll give the highlights uh, through uh, November, which is midway through our fiscal year. Um, at December 31st, uh, our cash balance was 17.4 million in the general fund, and that would fund 18.8 uh, uh, months of operations. And um, we we have a good cash position right now because we received uh, the remainder of our uh, fiscal year APC <coughs> grant payment uh, um, in. Um, on October 1st, which was 5 million. Our revenues through December were 1,965,000 above budget due to these payments, the receipt of these payments. Um, the remaining payments uh, would total nearly 8.1 million of the fiscal 21 grant and the receipt of these payments is, uh, is uncertain due to the state's uh, fiscal situation. Our investment income continues uh, well below budget. It was 71,000 below budget through mid-year as interests have remained well below, uh, well, a bit below 1% or 0.1%. We budgeted 1%. Our expenditures of uh, 5,658,000 through September, December were 652,000 below budget. Um, most, uh, Almost nearly uh, all major cost categories are under budget, particularly contractual services, um, which include the uh, delivery costs, and those are just a time lag. And uh, other grant items, uh, such as the uh, grants uh, for LSHAP staff membership, of which we have not uh, yet committed to any of these, and no expenditures. Our uh, supplies and postage are well under budget because we deferred the budgeted replacement of 95 laptop computers. Travel expenditures through December were $837. Uh, that's 55,740 below budget, and this will uh, remain uh, well under budget. We'll never have um, a year like this again, hopefully. 
Um, let's see. The um, our special revenue funds uh, have been active. Uh, the um, and they consist of currently of the L2 project and the Census 2020 program. The Census 2020 program uh, successfully concluded at the end of November. Um, but in uh, recently we were awarded another uh, grant for the for uh, an ebook uh, grant, which is federal funds. And we will use that to purchase specialized content for the e-read program. This uh, grant is for 125,000. And it was uh, provided uh, with federal funds, but through the Illinois State Library. Um, otherwise, there's nothing uh, else particular about the financials. I did have a little uh, update on the fraudulent uh, check event, which happened uh, uh, in November. We had three uh, checks, large checks that were uh, altered and cashed. Um, we received uh, a reimbursement for one of these, $18,000. And we do expect uh, at some point, uh, it can take up to about 90 days to receive reimbursement of the other two. But I have also uh, received uh, word from the um, United States Postal Service, the Office of Inspector General informing me that they had apprehended a uh, subject um, for uh, stealing the checks. And uh, this person will be prosecuted by the US Attorney's Office. Uh, there's no other word on that or information available, but I will be watching their sites uh, for details of it. They do uh, post their recent uh, prosecutions. Um, are there uh, any questions I can answer? Oh, one, uh, one other item, uh, uh, you're all familiar with the, uh, in the Illinois Department of Employment Security frauds uh, that are going out, uh, the filing of fake uh, uh, fraudulent uh, claims. I was a victim of this as well as, I, I think we're up to at least 10 people at our library and many libraries have the same experience. Um, it was announced last week that a task force uh, with the Illinois Attorney General, IDES, the F and the FBI, notably the FBI, because that brings in federal uh, uh, people, uh, has been formed to uh, uh, investigate this and hopefully crack down on it. There's been, uh, I think when this was I first reported our frauds, the number was at about 213,000. That was in of uh, such claims, and that was in November. And the number cited uh, in the announcement last week was 350,000. So uh, hopefully this will put a dent in that. So thank you. Hey, hey Jim, this is Scott. Uh, just to, I just wanna ask you a question about those numbers you just read. Those are numbers of people in Illinois who have had fraudulent claims. Is that yeah. what that number means? Yes, that's the number of fraudulent claims filed with IDES in Illinois itself. Got it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, my welcome. parliamentarian here <laughs> has informed me that we have to go back and uh, make a correction uh, to the consent agenda and to um, the minutes here. So, um, you have so to, you have to approve that you have to either you have to discuss the closed session minutes, right? So, that we have to, to yeah, because the review of the closed session minutes, uh, from uh, May 22nd and August 28th, um, uh, because the inspection of the minutes have to remain closed, they still require confidential uh, treatment. We have to, um, the motion has to be. There has to be a motion to move those minutes to a closed session, right? There has to be a motion to either open them or keep them closed. Right. Since you took them off the consent agenda. Right. Yeah. We have to then just we have to do something with them. Right. Right. So so, so the, the motion really needs to be that they <laughs> remain closed because they still require 
confidential treatment. That would be my recommendation. Okay, so this is Scott. I would amend my motion. Is that what we want to do? Uh, okay, I'll amend my motion. motion. I'll, I'll make a new motion <laughs> that uh, that we that the closed session minutes of May 22nd and August 28th of 2020 remain closed. This is Sarah Chase. Retired. This is Chase. I'd second that motion. Emily, will you please call roll? Yes. Uh, Diane Hollister. Yes. Chris Kenny. Yes. Sarah McCone Chase. Yes. Jennifer McIntosh. <laughs> She's trying to <laughs> unmute. I, I have a, I have an. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth didn't work. <laughs> Paul Mills. To say, so. Yes. Jenna McLuisi. You never know. Yes. Scott Poynton. Yeah, listen to it. Yes. Bradford. Yes. Thomas Stagg. I think on the yes. number they were. Yeah, the, the, the question yes. was uh, is this 350,000 just in Illinois? Yes. Yes. Jim, 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 mute yourself, please. <laughs> Jim, mute yourself, please. Do boost the he button. did. He did. Yes. Kelly Cox. Yes. Michael Campbell. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Emily. Sorry about that confusion, folks. So, okay. So we'll move to uh, agenda item number seven, reports. Um, we'll start with reports from the rail presidents, uh, from the rail president. Um, and right now I have no report. We'll move into committees. Um, the advocacy committee is first and Jenna, start with Jenna. Hi everyone, the advocacy committee met yesterday afternoon and we discussed four uh, separate topics. Um, the first we discussed was the, um, the status of our advocacy and outreach to specialized libraries. And I was very excited to have received the draft of a list or post or an email from Hallie Cox one of our board members who works in specialized libraries, Callie um, prepared a great um, introductory listserv, um, which could also be used as an email for specialized librarians out there who might not know what Rails offers. And so uh, we took a look at Hallie's uh, draft and um, we're really excited about the tone of it and the personal experiences that she shared. And, Hallie and I will be in touch um, in the next few days to talk about next steps for that. So we are very grateful to Hallie for um, taking those first steps for us. And we look forward to um, seeing how that introductory listserv or email can help to boost interest among specialized uh, libraries and librarians and help us to increase our advocacy efforts. So thank you to Hallie. Next we talk- Thank you for being patient. <laughs> of course, of course. We appreciate your collaboration and I'll look forward to taking our next steps with you. Great. Mm -hmm. Next we talked again, we revisited the topic of potential partnership opportunities between school and academic libraries. And uh, we acknowledged really that um, because this is such an unusual year, um, the collaboration and partnership opportunities have been, um, it's been a little bit more difficult maybe to figure out um, how to make those happen. Um, those opportunities sometimes are challenging even when we are not pandemic learning or in a COVID-19 situation. But um, we've been able to identify some really great starting points. And what we've been doing with our committee is really looking for common ground. And one of the things we identified yesterday is this idea of e-resources among all library types. It's a really great framework for something that we've been using especially now during pandemic learning and COVID-19, um, but something that we know is going to be prominent and really affect the way that we not only partner, but the way that we serve our communities in the future. So those are some really, um, that's a really strong area that we have identified. Another thing that we have wanted to do is to reach out to other folks um, who, who might be doing something similar with multi-type libraries, particularly with, um, school libraries and public libraries and how we might be able to leverage those types of experiences into partnership opportunities for school and academic libraries. Um, so we're definitely looking forward to uh, taking more part um, in that and backing up a little bit to the specialized libraries. We, we definitely want to reach out to other um, folks who work in specialized libraries and in different parts of the region um, that we can connect with. So we've identified a few folks that we're going to reach out to 
And so um, we, we hope to be taking more steps towards that in the future. The next thing we talked about are, was the ILA trustees forum and uh, trustee events that are coming up. So Percy and Tom, um, both of our Rails board members, Percy Harris and Tom Stagg gave us an update on what is going on um, in terms of next steps for the ILA trustees forum. Um, Percy had mentioned that there is a meeting tomorrow, um, Saturday the 16th. And so he will give us an update about how that went. And we also identified that Rails will be holding an um, online roundtable for trustees on January 20th. So we look forward to um, seeing how both of those trustee events uh, pan out and how we can continue our advocacy with the trustees and working more with the trustees um, in a Rails capacity. The last thing that we talked about, and I'm, then I'll wrap up this uh, long missive here, um, we talked about the ILA legislative meetups and how those are going to be starting on January 29th and going through early March. And we're hoping to talk a little bit later in the meeting, um, this, this larger board meeting today about um, how we might be able to even out attendance at all of those events to make sure that someone is, is going to all of them and so that we can make sure that we are well represented. So um, are there any other Rails Advocacy Committee members who would like to contribute anything more to this report? Thank you so much. That ends my report. Uh, I will send it back to you, Michael. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, the Consortia Committee, Paul. Oh, thank you, Michael. Um, the Consortia Committee did meet on Monday, January 11th, so just earlier this week. Um, our primary topics of discussion were uh, one that's familiar to the full board. We had a presentation by Greg Pronovitz, um, his delivery study, which I think uh, was very engaging to the Consortia Committee. Um, certainly, uh, prompts a little more on the procedural side of things just because the consortium managers think about that, but I think it was good conversation. Uh, we talked about uh, Grant Halter's statewide database survey results, um, Layla Heath's vendor uh, privacy policies project, which you can find on the Rails website, and that has been included, I believe, in the Rails uh, e news. Um, we also had a conversation about social members of return on investment that Prairie Cat has put together. Um, all really good topics. I'll say the vendor privacy is something that's really something near and dear to my heart. It's something we've done on our my, my home library's web, uh, website some time ago, and um, I'm actually looking forward to doing a privacy audit um, at our library of how we do things. There's actually a consultant out there who specializes in libraries and privacy. Uh, finally, of most interest, this actually happened initially uh, outside of the consortia uh, committee meeting. Um, Rails, the Rails executive team did receive a communication from the SWAN uh, board of uh, directors, one of the L, uh, official LSAPs in our in our consortium, expressing concern about the funding formula and the uh, how the consortia funds are allotted to each consortia member, uh, consortium, full consortia, I should say. Um, uh, Rails has uh, uh, asked to be present at the next one board meeting and actually has also asked me to join them as chair of the consortia committee. So um, Deirdre, Monica, Ann and I will be attending the SWAN board meeting next Friday, um, January 22nd, to have a, a further conversation about that. And I am very much looking forward to that. I think a, a good conversation about that would be helpful for everybody. Happy to answer any questions as well. Any questions? Okay. Thanks, Paul. The uh, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee, Diane. Hi. Hello. I'm happy to report that the EDI committee had its inaugural meeting on December 2nd. And um, I was very pleased. We had robust conversation, discussion. Everyone who attended and I believe roughly 20, 24 people attended at the time and everyone got to speak about their hopes and thoughts for our committee to proceed and succeed in the future. Um, I just wanted to give special thanks to um, Deirdre and to Biz, Lindsay Ryan, um, our consultant for their contributions and their guidance for this meeting. And we plan to meet again on um, February 18th, so Thursday at 11.30. And I believe that's tentative, but that's what I have on my calendar. 
Does anyone else have any questions or anything to contribute to that was at the meeting that um, have anything to contribute that I may have missed? You know, Diane, I'll just say one thing. Um, this is this is Deirdre, um, and this isn't just about this committee, but it, it it's come up a couple times. Obviously, any board member is welcome to attend any of our committee meetings. I just want yes. to be sure everybody knew that. Um, anybody, they're public meetings. Anybody can, but just think, just uh, just wanted to make sure that you all knew that. Yes, and it's okay. helpful to get feedback from other board members too if they want to yeah. sit in and listen. So thank you very much. Tom sat in on the meeting, so I'm grateful. Right. Thank uh, you. The next is the executive committee. We did not meet, um, so we'll keep moving. The policy committee, Tom Stagg. Uh, Michael, the policy committee did not meet. Okay. Uh, resource sharing committee. Did not meet. Okay. Or did they? Did they meet? Uh, since our last meeting was in November, they November. did December 14th. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, then the Universal Service Committee, Sue. Uh, we did not meet, but we do have a meeting on the calendar, which will be Friday, February 5th, from 2.30 to 4.30. And I'd like to thank Anna Duff for combing through all our schedules and getting this all organized. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. I know it's hard for the staff here to try to manage everybody's schedule. So thank you for that. Um, okay, next with the rails reports. Um, yes, thank you. yes, thank you. Uh, I did send you all an email not that long before the meeting uh, just to uh, make sure you all knew that we were what I guess is called Zoom bombed yesterday at the advocacy committee meeting. Um, obviously, all of our meetings are public meetings. We can't keep anybody out of a Zoom meeting or anybody could walk in here to this meeting. Uh, we are... Um, However, it was very distracting and um, clearly, you know, inappropriate. Um, and so we want to, well, you know, while we of course comply with the Open Meetings Act at all time, we also want our meetings to run as efficiently and smoothly and as unstressfully as possible. So admin and IT are in some discussions about some possible ideas. Um, we want to run some things by our attorneys um, there's nothing, I mean, obviously we can't and don't want to keep the public out, but we want to keep what, <laughs> you know, practical controls we can. So just so you know that. So do you, um, Deirdre, this is Scott. I, I haven't experienced this, thankfully, um, you know, without using words that they use, like what, what were they doing? Were they just like yelling and interrupting? Pornography. Or? Thanks, oh, they were, they were almost yeah. always. Oh, it was. Oh, it's always. Oh, okay. Right. Almost not. Okay. Huh. We uh, this, this is Paul. Early early in the pandemic, I think the Zoom put out like the security guidelines. You know, when Zoom volume became a thing, and we actually did review it with our attorney, who actually said you can do this. Nope, you can't do this because it will may. It was a it was a really really helpful checklist, which yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Anselm Link has. If not, I'm happy to share what we have. We did report it to the Internet Crime Division of the FBI. Of the FBI. Um, and I think checking with, you know, with, with Zoom, if there's, you know, I mean, they can trace things perhaps also. Um, I mean, I'm glad the, to hear know, that you reported it. Pardon me? I said, I'm glad to hear that you reported it. Oh, yes. And, yeah. you know, every, the, the meeting was very productive, you know, but it's just, you want to. So as, as, you know, they being, I assume, just like regular old Zoom participants, did they make their profile picture like a, pornographic picture. I'm, I'm still bogged down in the mechanics of this. Like, how did they, how do they So achieve? when the meeting started, yeah. we were, you know, there were a couple of members of the public that, the, you know, every, I mean, mostly everybody's video was still off. Mm -hmm. So, but there were a couple of members of the public, which is not unusual, as you know, we've had, and is fine, of course. And, it, and sometimes it's because they're interested. Sometimes it's because they got into the wrong meeting. 
Right. So when the videos were, the, when the meeting started and the videos were turned on, there was a person there doing something that he shouldn't have been doing. Exposing himself. Huh. Yeah, he was exposing himself. So the, but this wasn't oh, no. happening live. This wasn't a, like a video. This is, yeah, it's usually this is like a live. I'm sorry? This must have been like a live. It was. Live it, it was. It was a okay. live. It was live. It, it sure was. was. Live. Okay, it, was wow. it was terribly, terribly live. So, um, oh. yeah, it was horrible. So we don't want that to happen to anybody ever again, if we can arrange sure, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Monica and uh, Karen Goyer, who was the admin, be, uh, acted incredibly immediately and appropriately um, to, to turn, first turn off the video and then, uh, you know, kick the person out of the meeting. Sure. In the course of kicking the person out of the meeting, Unfortunately, as the participant list was kind of scrolling, which it does, we also uh, ejected Sarah McCone Chase oh, yeah. without meaning to. And then when you do, when you- They can't get back in They can't get back, can't get back right. in. But Sarah called in. You know, Sarah called in. And Jenna did a marvelous job of keeping things going, <laughs> as did the entire committee. It, yeah. was, it was very unpleasant. It yeah. was very stressful. It was, it was very it was very unsettling. I think we all felt yes. very discombobulated for um, yes. a good 10, 15 minutes um, yes. trying to, you know, kind of really process what happened. Um, and I uh, I do applaud the efforts of Karen and uh, Ryan came and joined us too to try to yes. figure out the Zoom issues. Um, everybody who, who came in to try to help us address it and everybody who acted quickly to make sure that that person was excused and not permitted to come back in. And um, I was just impressed at how much, how well we were able to conduct the meeting after that happened because it was, yeah. it would have been very easy to say, maybe we need to reschedule, but we, we yeah. plowed through <laughs> and uh, it, it went well and it was very productive. Yes, so, yes. kudos you. to everyone. Yes, and you know, to you, Jenna. You know, I, I sit on another board, and and we've had this case too. It's the the Girl Scouts, and and they have a waiting room. Yeah, I and mean, not that you can, they that person can still get in and do what they did. Right. But at least they have to name themselves. Yes, and I think that's one step <laughs> that we can easily take. Yeah. We, we, there's certain yeah, that it, step where you can put in your name and your Yeah, name. unless they name themselves, they cannot get in to the room. But it's still, I mean, you can't keep people out ultimately, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so then the rail staff stayed on afterwards just to kind of brainstorm a bit. Mm -hmm. And then I know admin Emily and Ryan have had more conversations and we have to run some stuff by our attorney. So we're not the first organization and we won't be the last. Right, right. So. Uh, this is Stu Busenbark and I just have a question. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to be actually invited to the Zoom meeting. I don't understand how you would like if I wanted to go to the advocacy committee meeting, how do I do that? If well, I don't have an invitation. Because well, because you're not a hacker and you are a law abiding, <laughs> wonderful person, you know, I as we be. all are. <laughs> We no, don't we know how to do it, but there are lots of people out there who know how to hack into things. And we have to and, post it legally. Yeah, the, the Zoom link is just in the agenda. That's how I usually find it. I just open yes. the agenda and then use the link there. The agenda to so, to the, so uh, the all, right. all of our all of our agendas have the Zoom information at the top. And, okay. it also and all the agendas listed, are on the website. It also okay. is listed right. on our website. No. Okay. And, okay. And in L and in L two. All right. Okay. And there's probably yeah. some other way that, website. like, a hacker can just be like, "Here are some open meetings happening right now, and I can just right. go be in any of them." But right. okay. no, I it's really wanted... easy to, to enter any of our meetings. Like, it's it's supposed to be. So okay. So I just go to the website, and then I can get. If you were targeting us, yeah. like specifically, but I bet there's other ways to do it more randomly. I, I don't know what they are. Just like if, well, well, I think, I think Sue's asking because she wants to, to attend. Yeah, <laughs> what are you plotting, Sue? Uh, what are you plotting, Sue? No, no, I'm not trying to hack the meeting. I just when yeah. um, Jenna said everybody's welcome to attend. I guess I didn't. I don't know how to attend a meeting other than being invited through email. So you go to the website, look for right. the meeting, and then go to the agenda. 
The yeah. FBI is going to come knocking on your door soon. <laughs> okay. so. You know what? I'll just, I'll just wait for the report. <laughs> so I think to address Sue's question, though, because Dee brought it up about everybody being able to go to all committee meetings, one of the things we do at LaGrange is everybody on the board gets the information about all of the committee meetings once they're finalized, right? So there's a committee meeting on this date. All board members are welcome to sure, attend. We, we can. And that's a good way to remind us to, to look, because I have two in February on two different committees here, and I wouldn't have the bandwidth to figure out who else has meetings in February. But if I knew and I was free, I would go. Sure, so. we can do that. The one thing is to know that just like the, the Zoom meetings, if we were meeting in person, our meetings would be open to the public and anybody could could walk in here and and meet. So that it's the same kind of thing. So um, so anybody could just walk in and if, and hopefully not do that, do whatever and do whatever, <laughs> right. you know. So right. if they agreed or disagreed with with, with what we we're doing, they could. I'm you know. shocked. Right. I'm so shocked. Yeah. Well, thank you. So was I. <laughs> it, I mean, it was very shocking. It's, yeah. I've, I've certainly been in meetings where that's happened before, but it's it's upsetting every time. And I mean, that's what it, that's why they do it. They want to upset you. So. And yeah, it, you're yes. right. The power thing. It, the, I think what was uh, especially unsettling for me is I was calling the meeting to order, and I said, "Okay, let's let's go ahead and get started, everybody." And then the person turned on the camera, and there we were. Uh, so. <laughs> But yes, oh I hope it. Yes. I hope it never happens again. Yes. Me too. So moving on to more mundane matters, um, unfortunately. Uh, so we, uh, in my report, I did uh, outline um, or describe how um, Monica and I have been attending some of the networking group meetings, and it's been absolutely fascinating, enlightening, heartwarming. Um, so I just put some examples in my report and um, we're actually going to be, we've been uh, telling Diane Foote about the, what we've been finding out and she's, I think it's the, it's gonna be very useful for the, the, uh, the ILA meetups. And we're also going to be um, adding these to our My Library Is website. She'll be hearing more about later. I think that, you know, when people, when we talk about My Library Is, um, and asking libraries to, you know, post on the website. I think that it's, you know, people think, oh, well, my story's not that important, you know, or so what we're going to do is, you know, we're just gonna sort of mine these groups for this information as well as meet with them to find out how they're all doing. And then, um, you know, uh, then we'll do the posting on the blog or we'll interview you know, you know, maybe a little bit more. I mean, it's just, you know, the other day we heard about, well, I told, I mentioned to, to um, some of you earlier, Black Hawk College, just as one more example, um, you know, students are attending, well, uh, Beth Teppen was at this meeting. She heard this, this story too. Um, uh, there's a student that they became aware of that's in the, you know, the library parking lot using their Wi-Fi she comes to the library to use the Wi-Fi and sits in her car to attend class with her three children. So, I mean, that's like a, you know, right? So um, that's the kind of stuff that we're hearing. It's really unbelievable what's going on out there. Um, I mean, in a good way, you know. Um, um, let's see. We are uh, continuing our IL uh, meetings with IHLS and now ILA has joined us also. So I think that's a great partnership. Um, certification is going to be coming along soon, uh, starting in February. Uh, Diane told you about the Equity, Diversity, Inclusion Committee. It really was a great meeting. Um, we're gonna have a discussion later on about um, board engagement and how we can be, we can do a better job of that. I won't go into that now. Um, uh, happy to answer any questions about the report. Anything that's in it or isn't. Questions? Okay. Thank you, Deidre. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we'll move on to a report from the Rails communication team. And I believe Mary 
is uh, going to talk about um, my library is. Yes, thank you, Michael. Um, I'm Mary Witt. I'm the Rails Marketing and Communications Director. I'm one of four members of our communications team here, and we're all going to talk to you a little bit to give you an update about our My Library Is campaign. As a reminder, we started this campaign in 2019 to help libraries of all sizes and types to demonstrate their value to different stakeholders. And we believe that the campaign is more than more important than ever now in light of um, future budgetary issues for libraries and also in helping libraries show their value during the pandemic. There is a handout in your packet with more information and we're just gonna give you some of the highlights from that handout today. And we're gonna start with Brian Smith. Hi, uh, I hope you all can hear me. Uh, I'm going to share a screen so that uh, I can kind of show off the My Library Is website. Uh, which, there we go. Uh, the the library the my library is website is at mylibraryis.org. Uh, it was launched about a year and a half ago, and uh, it's a resource to help libraries tell their stories and increase their visibility. Uh, as you can see on the home page, one of the things we have featured there is our Elders of the Internet video, which uh, 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 actor Nick Offerman uh, very graciously uh, offered his time to. If you haven't seen that yet, please uh, please watch it. It's 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 wonderful. Uh, also on the website, uh, we have uh, talking points for each type of library and other resources uh, uh, and other tools to help libraries get started. Uh, there's also an area on the website for libraries to share things that they have been doing to get their message out. Uh, the videos area is especially popular on here. Uh, and uh, we're, we're not getting uh, as many contributions, uh, you know, into the sharing showcase as we had hoped. I think a big part of that is that, that uh, libraries tend to share things uh, with other Rails members through our email lists. So we're, you know, sort of a victim of our own success uh, in that way. Uh, uh, but very po the most popular uh, area of the website is is the blog on here, uh, which does contain uh, those those stories uh, either submitted by libraries themselves or uh, or Dan uh, Dan Bostrom will work with libraries to uh, create a, a a larger uh, blog posting, and uh, uh, th these items get uh, fairly well read. And you know, because they're so popular, we have just started uh, sharing them on the Rails, uh, the homepage of the Rails website too. Uh, and now I'm going to turn things over to uh, my colleague Dan Bostrom to uh, talk about uh, new developments in my library. Is yeah, th thanks, Brian. Um, <laughs> good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm just going to give a couple highlights of, of things that are going on in and in development for uh, uh, for this spring uh, and this year. Um, one of them is actually uh, culminating today. Uh, we have our My Library Is uh, grants for school libraries, and those the due date for that is today. Uh, so I've been watching the applications roll in. Uh, this has been fun because we've been working with ILE and um, ILE, the School Library uh, Professional Association. Uh, they have a team that's going to be doing the evaluation of these grants. So we were able to get the actual school librarians to evaluate them, which is really exciting. Uh, so that work will be uh, done very soon. Uh, we'll probably be uh, letting libraries know their status in like mid-February, and then we'll be awarding the funds um, in early March. Uh, something else that we have going on is our um, My Library is a uh, advisory team. And this is something that we launched back in the fall. It's 11 folks from different types of libraries. Uh, all, all four types are represented, which is great. Um, they've been doing regular blog posts, which is fantastic. Um, we've also been doing, uh, we do what we're going to do quarterly meetings and we just had our, our, our quarterly meeting uh, last week and uh, they're, they're talking about some bigger projects that they're going to start working on. Um, and one of those is actually an infographic. 
um, that they are hoping it, it will be a template that they're hoping uh, libraries can actually just plug in their own numbers and use that for their ad advocacy purposes. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, there's a couple other things that they were hoping to work on. Um, they've been talking about doing um, uh, like more just communication over the marketing and public relations email list that we have. Um, you know, trying to get more enthusiasm over that and, and the way that libraries are marketing themselves. Um, so that's just a few things that we have going on. And I think at this point, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Mary, who's going to talk about some more plans for the second half of FY21. Mary? Yes, thank you, Dan. Um, I just wanted to highlight a few of the things that we have immediately coming up. Um, we did talk to the board about the campaign back in July, and we gave you a more detailed plan at that time. And there is a link to that plan in the handout in your board packet. So you can also look at that. One of the things that we want to do in February is to reintroduce the elders of the internet video that Brian showed you, starring Nick Offerman. Um, we first debuted that video on February 14th of 2020, which in addition to being Valentine's Day, is also Library Lovers Day. We worked with a marketing firm to create it, and we created it in response to a tremendous need expressed by our libraries of all types for help showing that libraries were still important in the internet age. And I think we really made some great strides promoting that video in February, but then unfortunately we all know what happened shortly after that, the pandemic hit, so it kind of put a damper in some of our plans. So we want to reintroduce that again around its anniversary, around um, Valentine's Day. Um, we're going to have a social media campaign and a lot of other publicity. So watch for that. We also want to continue to promote the talking points that Brian also showed you. Um, those are designed for all types and sizes of libraries. We often hear members say that they don't know what to say when they're talking about the library to different stakeholders. And those talking points are short, they're easily customizable for a variety of different situations. So if you haven't looked at those, I really strongly encourage you to look at those and share them with anyone who speaks about libraries, because I think they really can be a big help. Another thing that we're um, doing um, we built some very effective partnerships for the campaign, like with ILA, and um, one of the things we're going to be starting is to work more closely with the uh, Illinois Heartland Library System. Um, we feel that they can help us expand the content on the website. Um, they can get their members to contribute. They can help us spread the word about the campaign to their members. And we'd also like to work with them to create a survey for all Illinois libraries, just to make sure that we're on the right track with the campaign to find out if there's any other activities we should be involved in. So we're looking forward to that. And finally, we wanna to continue to enhance and expand um, the blog on the My Libraries website. Um, that is the most used part and libraries are always looking for stories um, so we do encourage members to post. As Deirdre mentioned, we're going to be adding the great stories that we're hearing from uh, their networking group visits. We think that if libraries see how um, easy it is to post a story, and you don't have to create world peace. You can really, you know, get some really great stories um, just from what you do in your everyday activities. So we're thinking that that can really help to uh, beef up the blog a little bit. And now, um, as our last but not least, I'm going to turn it over to Nicole Zimmerman to finish us off today. Hey, everybody. Um, I haven't met a lot of you, so I will just introduce myself. As Mary said, Nicole Zimmerman, a lot of people call me Nikki. Um, I'm the marketing and public relations specialist here. My main job, uh, maybe my most important job, is to write and edit the weekly e-news, Rails e-news, um, which is our primary means of communication with our members. And I sign up bo new board members as they come on. So if you do not receive the e-news every Wednesday, please let me know. Um, so, um, Mary and Dan and Brian kind of touched on some of the things that I just want to wrap up with. Um, but basically, I want to focus on what you as board members can do to support the My Library is campaign. 
Um, you heard mention of the talking points. We created those talking points for each library type. So there are four separate talking points. Um, they're, they're beautifully done kind of in an infographic style. So they're really easy to approach um, from a staff's standpoint. They can be you know, printed out and kept handy at, at a staff's fingertips. They can be printed out and left behind at meetings when we have those in person again. Um, they kind of they include topics like you know why do I need the library I have Google <laughs> you know things that in a moment are kind of hard for people to maybe address but um, the talking points do that for you um, also things on the talking points like you know library funding and investment um, you know the fact that libraries are staffed with information experts. The talking points are um, something that we'd ask you to make sure that your libraries know exist. Um, and they're really for any level of staff as well. So the other thing that uh, was highlighted here with my um, team as well is the Elders of the Internet video. So if you are able or willing to share it on your own social media, um, it's totally, you know, acceptable for that. Um, we would encourage you to tell your libraries about it, make sure they know, see if they're willing to share it on their social media or on their um, library's website. And um, also there are, we created a list of 25 ways to promote the video. So you can let your libraries know that that exists too. And then finally, um, consider contributing to the website yourselves, um, whether it be a blog or a library story, and, and also talk again to your libraries about you know, them contributing. And it's, um, as Brian pointed out when he showed the website, it's, it's blog and stories, but it's also you know, marketing materials and videos and a lot of other things as well. So um, does anybody have any questions overall about my library is in general. I have a comment. This is Jennifer McIntosh. Um, I, I really love, I love the range of resources there and it shows the diversity of ways that uh, people think about their library. Something that um, I did a few years ago in a presentation with our board of trustees was presenting our library to them through the through the lens of different personas, different different kinds of students that utilize the library, and to try to break out of that standard idea of what an academic library user is, because I felt that that was a, kind of a missing piece of the conversation. So, as much as I absolutely appreciate all these different lenses of academic libraries, I think an, an additional way to maybe flip the concept on its head would be to think about it from more of a user perspective even like there's different kinds of some people are like power users they, they practically live at the library they think of it library for everything but just as valid and and important is the person who only comes in once a year but the library is, is essential when they do need it and I think um, there's cross those people cross boundaries of different library types so it's maybe just a different slice on the what a library is to people it's a different way of thinking about it that's great. Thank this you, is, Jennifer. Awesome. Thank you. This is this is Becky Spradford. I had an idea after reading through your things. I know that there have been some My Library Is branded webinars through the CE department, but reading the blog, which I do read, um, I think it would be great if we really want to get more of like the boots on the library on the ground library workers involved, because that's what we need to do, right? And it's sort of like what Jennifer said, getting them involved, sharing their stories. Maybe we could ask some of the people who did blog posts if they'd be part of a series of sort of just webinars sharing their experience. And they don't have to do, I know some people don't like to present, but they've already written the blog post, right? So if you did a series of like five or six of them and you did them like once every other month and you just ask them to kind of just elaborate on what they wrote in their blog post and you just show pictures they already took, but I think it would personalize it more. And I know from doing sort of how to presentations for people. I tell them what they should do and then I send them to an example, right? To look at their own time. So in this case, we're giving them the example, but we're not giving them that personal story behind it. 
I think that's really going to inspire library workers because they are exhausted right now, right? And they know they should be advocating, but they do not have the bandwidth. So, but I think they'd be energized sort of by this, here are some of your colleagues and we already have, they already did the work, right? We only have to find a few. And I think it would be great if it was a series because then it would inspire more people to write blog posts and then it would inspire more people to then present. I just can see that as something that's not a lot of effort from everybody involved and it would keep the momentum going. That's great, thank you, Becky. Any other comments, questions? <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Mary and team. Uh, we'll move on to the State Library. Uh, Greg? Good afternoon, everyone, and greetings from the staff here at the State Library and also from Secretary White. So um, I had several things to review with you. Um, first, and Jim made mention of this as far as the consideration of the FY21 budget. Um, as of today, it is the intent of the Secretary's Office that we will move forward with the grant programs as they were appropriated this past summer. So um, as of now, any um, reductions that may occur with the greater state budget, um, it is not intended that it would necessarily impact our department or our grant programs. Um, it's also um, to note that it's the intent of the office for FY22 to move forward at the level that we have in FY21. So um, I think that is all good news for our office, certainly for libraries and literacy programs in the state. Of course, there is much discussion and much work that needs to occur between now and the end of May on those topics. Um, certainly you've all seen in the press what's occurred with the change of leadership in the General Assembly um, and many events uh, that have occurred here in the last few days, including that um, as of this morning, now the Senate, all members of the Senate have been asked to quarantine as well because of COVID-19 exposures. And as we left yesterday, it was um, members of the House. So that is all developing as are the changes in the Department of Public Health regulations regarding mitigation efforts. I wrote down coming into this meeting that we expected um, regions three and five to change mitigation um, status. And as we were meeting the regions one, two and five have changed their mitigation status um, and not region three, which includes Springfield and West Central Illinois, um, the majority of which is, is rails territory. Um, I've yet to see what those mitigation changes mean. Um, the documents on what tier one or tier two of phase four um, really indicate in a definitive matter um, that's not available on the Department of Public Health's website yet. So um, I'm certain that we will be getting questions in the coming days. Um, another topic of concern today, of course, is the security in and around the Capitol complex. Um, we've watched this morning from the state libraries, they've begun to board up the windows um, wow. at the Capitol. It's kind of weird. Um, we're to have 250, National Guard troops um, in place as well around the Capitol complex. We're waiting to see what that's going to mean. Um, again, for Secretary of State and State Library operations, that's one reason I am in my office awaiting for more direction, probably coming yet this afternoon, or I hope yet this afternoon on what that will mean. I know that many other state offices are going to be closed. And of course, the governor has had to dispatch now. It's up to 300 troops to DC. So it's an interesting time here in Springfield. Um, there are many other good things, though, too. So we're moving forward with 
Uh, today is the final day for the Live and Lund construction grant applications to be filed with our office. And as of this morning, we did have 13 applicant libraries. So that is good news as well. Um, we look forward to review of those. Um, and of course, today is the final comment day for the administrative rules regarding non-resident services, um, which will, of course, lead us to need to update and continue to um, work with the library systems on the FAQ document um, that needs to go along with what will eventually become the second filing of those rules. Um, we will also be participating um, with the Universal Service Committee that was mentioned earlier and discussion there. Um, I will say that one um, area of concern, um, <laughs> which is not new, <laughs> it's, it's in the old rules and would matter whether you are acquiring a card for from the Cards for Kids program, et cetera, is shared school district territory, um, which we've been in communication with the library systems already. That information is in the old or the current version of the administrative rules, um, but there appears to be much more work to be done in that area with the library systems playing a very significant <clears throat> role with the libraries in that. And I think it's as much because now people are really thinking about the implications of, of what may occur, but um, that's really not a new issue to this topic, but something that we're going to have to address very, very closely because even as of this morning, the comments that were coming in, that's an area of a concern, which again is not new. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, maybe that is it from Springfield for today. So. Anyway, questions for us. Well, thank you for the good news, Greg, on the grant, mm -hmm. on the budget. Yeah. I mean, at least for today, it's good news. And it, yeah, as, as we move forward, I, I would hope that I could give sure. a similar report <laughs> through June 30th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I assume that includes the per capita increase it does um okay. that that's part of what we will still have to work toward um in making sure that we get that allocated for fy21 yep. um those who are following closely uh the authorizing language was introduced in this uh lame duck legislative session it made it through the senate with unanimous consent in the final actions of the 101st General Assembly, it was not acted upon by the House. So um, we will, of course, continue to work for um, assuring that that's passed and addressed. Hey, Greg, this is Scott. I know, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but it, um, <laughs> Like what, what's like the ideal world timeline on that? And then and then do you have like a worst case scenario timeline? I guess the worst is they just don't do it. But but uh, for those of us that might be writing a budget in April, <laughs> would, would there, do you think, do you expect there to be news on that between now and April? You know, I, I am hesitant to say between now and April. I would have hoped I could have come today and said it's, it's, it's done and we could, we could start planning. Um, it's, I will say it may be easier for to us to address this with the public libraries than with the school libraries, just because how the existing language reads. Sure. There's some ambiguity and wiggle room in the public library, so it may make budgeting, but we, we it needs to be addressed with both. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Greg? I guess I, I would just add that we uh, we did schedule a member update for the 29th, I think. Is that right, Mary? Somewhere. Is that right, Greg? And, it, it's uh, the Greg 28th, and, and that was on my notes, and I forgot to mention that. Yes, we will be giving oh. more information about um, the non-resident services, what, and an overview um, 
of the administrative rules at that member update on the 28th. So we do look forward right. to that. Yes, yeah, thank you for being um, willing to do that. And uh, please stay safe, everybody down there. We're thinking about you. Well, thank you. Yes. Yep, yep. Thank you. Next up is item number eight, which starts our new business, uh, which is a membership change. So with Dan Bostrom. Yeah, th thank you so much. Uh, yes, this is uh, the Henry George School of Social Science. Uh, they're a small nonprofit sc uh, school located in downtown um, Chicago. I met with Adam Kerman, uh, who is the librarian, the person in charge of the librarian uh, back in November. Um, they've been doing courses online uh, for the past, uh, you know, nine months, a year at this point. Um, and they do they do have a small library. Uh, you can see the collection size is only 700. So pretty small. But uh, Adam was familiar with the old uh, NSLS. Um, he he uh, lives up there in the, uh, the north suburbs. And uh, he knew about it through his use of the public library and uh, he wondered you know is this something that uh, the school um, where he's employed uh, could potentially uh, be part of that system and knew that uh, there were special libraries uh, and academic libraries that were a part of it so uh, he got he reached out to us um, you know we had a meeting uh, it went really well he seems pretty knowledgeable about libraries um, he's really interested in joining rails uh, for the p potential of doing interlibrary loan you know we talked a lot about um, how they could do courier service because they're local located in the city of Chicago. So he was excited about that. Um, also continue education um, and then the potential for grants as well. Um, so I, I think this one's a pretty uh, straightforward one. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, uh, to take them. Okay, if not, may I have a motion to approve the Henry George School of Social Science for mo full membership in Rails as presented? and request final approval from the Illinois State Library. So moved, this is Jenna. Second. And a second. Okay, Emily, will you call roll? Sure. Chris Kenny. Yes. Sarah McCone Chase. Yes. Jennifer McIntosh. Yes. Paul Mills. Yes. Jenna McIntosh. Yes. Scott Poynton. Yes. Becky Spratford. Yes. Thomas Stagg. Yes. Beth Teppen. Yes. Alex Vancina. Yes. Sue Busenberg. Yes. Ellie Cox. Yes. And Diane Hollister. Yes. Michael Campbell. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, Item number 8.2, which uh, is about board engagement and expectations, which is a discussion only item. We'll go back to Deidre. Yes, thank you. Uh, so um, as I said to you in my report, I just, I was hoping we could have a conversation about uh, board engagement and your expectations about being a board member, among other things. Um, we did have a great conversation with uh, in our Rails climate team with our EDI consultant, uh, Biz Lindsay, about uh, the board experience. What you know, what's what we as staff thought we knew about board experience, and she suggested that we. She wanted to know, you know, uh, how, you know when we asked the question of how it, you know, how it is to be a board member versus, or maybe not versus, but as compared with um, what you expect to, as a board member. And we thought, shame on us, we've never asked that question. We've never asked, I mean, I think we do a better job of orientation every year, but we're all, you know, this is a, just another opportunity to make it. So um, I think that Mary is going, I know that Mary is going to, is putting together a board engagement survey and this isn't about you, this is about us, you know, how we can do this better, what barriers exist, um, you know, just, uh, I mean, obviously, we as Rails staff, I mean, we know ra about Rails, and it's inevitable that we assume that you know or experience certain things. I mean, that's the whole thing about EDI, right, is you, you're, you think that other people experience things the way you do, and that is certainly not 
often true. So that's what we're trying to get at here. We're trying to understand um, how we can um, just do a better job of, you know, of, of understanding each other and working together so that Rails itself will be a better organization. So, um, you know, Michael and I, you know, I, I briefed Michael on this and, um, you know, we think it'd be great if you would have, if we would have a conversation, but if we don't have to today, we'll, we'll certainly do the survey, but I think this is, this is really important and uh, would love to hear any feedback that you all have about it. Yeah, I commend you guys for doing this. This is Hallie. Um, I just remember back in the day when I was new to the library field and new to boards and I was sit, you know, I was invited and sat on my first few boards and, and I had no idea what boards were, or what they entailed. And I like some of the boards I joined initially, they expected financial contributions, which I was completely unaware of at the time. And, you know, so things like that I think just having a what does the board actually do kind of statement or discussion on the website, something. So if people are interested in running, they can actually mm -hmm. see yes. what, what does the board do? What, what are they responsible for? Does that make sense? Yes, it absolutely makes sense. And that, I mean, that was another thing that we talked about with biz, which is not, you know, related to the current board, but how to that, you know, in terms of recruitment, it would be good if we could, and we've talked about this, I think, in terms of board diversity, having a more diverse in terms of like job title, like, you know, great to get like, um, you know, not just directors or trust, but well, we have, I mean, trustees, obviously, but um, not just directors, because you experience library work differently, you experience rails differently, and that's helpful to us to have that diversity. And speaking of EDI opening up my mind about these sort of issues too, one of the things I've learned by doing more EDI work and being on multiple boards is, and I've, I've talked with Joe here at Rails about it, but the lack of communication that happens from the and let's use a library, for example, but I think it, it works here too at Rails. From the boots on the ground library worker to the people in charge. And in some libraries, the pandemic is heightening this. You're seeing the lack of communication between the just even like the director and the management team and the staff. I don't think that's the case here at Rails from what I've seen. But let me tell you, it's a huge problem. And in general, I think there needs to be more ways for. And I think this happened at Rails too, for the employees not just the managers, to have communication with the board, other managers, maybe not their, not, not necessarily only their boss, right? There, and there need to be more, I don't know how well you do this at Rails, and maybe I should, how well you have committees that have people from different levels. I know that's something we work on a lot at LaGrange. We make sure our committees have representation from pages to management and all, all committees. Um, but that has been a huge, working remotely, I'm seeing that as an inclusion and equity issue. And I just think there needs to be better communication. Not that it, it can't cross lines, obviously, but there isn't a way for engagement with the whole organization in these cases, um, whether it's the libraries themselves or rails. And I think that is something that this entire industry has to get better at in general. No, no argument. Yeah. So uh, this is Scott um, coming back to the the, the job description. Yeah. I love this. I mean, I think this is so important, and this is great uh, for people thinking about running for this, yeah. you know, this board, and also people on the board. But um, if I could make, if it's open to one minor little suggestion, the at the at the very beginning, there's the opening general description paragraph, and then the bullet points. That first bullet point, um, because we just in the sentence before said board. And then in the first bullet point, we say board like that's there's a board and there's a board. They're not the same board. So maybe in the first bullet point, we say trustees from public libraries to show that there's a distinction between. Oh, I see what you mean. Like a board member from yeah, the public library and this times. board. Yeah, there's a lot of board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
And we do need to add language to make it clear that anyone who works at a library can apply for these things. Well, right. But the, that first bullet point makes it sound like eight seats are guaranteed to anyone from a public library. That is, and that is not true. That is not they true. have to be a trustee. They right. have to be trustees. Right, right. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yes, the job if I could interject is, something. Yes. If I could interject something. Um, my experience has been that on other committees that I've worked on, and I've been charged with the specific duties, some of those duties put me in the situation where I was just merely serving as a conduit because they were so established and they've been doing the same thing every year, almost by rote, that I just went back, I was just like the middleman and there really was nothing to report. But what I enjoy about the rails is with this EDI, it's so new and we can go different ways. And it just gives you a different avenue to look at different things and hear other people rather than being in just in a, in a place where there's really no movement because everything is down to a science almost. At least that's been my experience <laughs> in the three committees that I've served on in my, you know, when I was working as a librarian before I retired. So I enjoy, I just enjoyed this uh, experience so much because it's opened my eyes to different parts of librarianship that I really had no experience with. So I'm, I'm just really happy with it. It exposes me to different areas that, you know, working behind the desk and working with as a public service librarian and reference librarian and academic, I really didn't encounter some of these issues that you're bringing up. and. And it's just fascinating for me. So it's been very enriching. Thank you, Diane. That's great to hear. And other, other, uh, I remember Dave Barry's former board member said to me after he had been on the board just a little while, he's like, I get it now, I think. You know, I see how it all kind of fits together. You know, it's like, you know, the circles ever grow enlarging circles. So that's good. But, and no, we don't have it down to a science, that's for sure. <laughs> but that being said about getting it, another thing I think, because Rails and one of our goals is to be the very best library system, and I'll tell you, I travel the country and people hear that I'm part of Rails and they're like, oh, you know, teach us how to do things like Rails. So we, we are doing a really good job with that. But we need to maybe hear from other library systems. Like, uh -huh. well, part of my job has been great. It's great that I get to meet librarians from all over the country, but most of us don't, right? So I think that, you know, we don't even meet with the Heartland board, really. No, I mean, that's like a thing we should be doing maybe once a year, doing a joint that. meeting together where it's just us communicating with each other, right? Or, and then possibly targeting other library systems. Now I know, and I know you all know this, every state is so different, but I think we need chances to hear from other people too. I, Becky, I will tell you when I was president, that was a main goal okay. of mine to set up regular meetings um, between our board and the Heartland board and for a variety of circumstances it didn't happen. Doesn't mean it can't still be pursued, but I wholeheartedly agreed and I put forth a fair amount of effort into that. And, and, and I, then I, we had the pandemic. Yeah, and, I think but it might be easier now with the pandemic. I, I think we had made a substantial progress and we're even in the midst of talking about when to have it at in Springfield with the, the mm -hmm. even with the, the state library and then boom, the right. pandemic. Of course, now that we are also love in love with zoom <laughs> some it's days actually others. easier would in some ways would be easier to do theoretically yes yeah. mm -hmm. yes I, I have a thought will, uh, words yes. here. this is jenna from mcintosh i i i think there's something that um escapes some people sometimes which is what what is the value of serving on a board like why would i why would i want to do this and um, in some recent calls for volunteers that I put out in, in, in another context, you know, I kind of prefaced it with a little bit of a, you know, it was, it was, I was like, hey, this is, you're probably not used to getting communications like this, but this is why you should volunteer, why the value to you personally and professionally to your organization. And I think people who aren't generally in positional leadership roles, sometimes they do tend to not think of themselves as a likely candidate. But when you frame it in a way for why their perspective is valuable as a preface, I think there there can be something really, it's an important piece of it. So I get to get some movement on some things 
just after I, 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 I framed something that way and I was like, ah, okay. I got a few more people's attention that probably never would have, never would have hit me back. So thank yeah. you, Jennifer. Yep. I was thinking yeah. the same thing. This is Hallie. Just sort of do a come join our team, have it be a little bit more personal introduction. Um, Why, you? Why you? Why would it be you, yeah. right? <laughs> Hallie, that's like that letter that you wrote that we talked about yesterday in advocacy in the same, same way that you had that that tone, that bright, that bright tone, that warming, warm tone, the welcoming sort of tone, an upbeat tone. Yeah, so that, that's interesting. Part of our team. Yeah. Well, another thing I think about though is that sometimes when we have like staff people in our libraries and they're not in positional leadership um, roles it's they they don't think of themselves not, it's not only that they don't think of themselves as being leaders it's also that it's decidedly not their job that there there isn't anything in 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 taking on all that responsibility that will benefit them and that, i mean that's hard i think that's hard to say and it's hard to hear but you know staff often don't feel appreciated in our institutions and we if we wanted them to uh come and um participate more there needs to be there needs to be a reward that they can see that will be beneficial to them as well and that's well, a couple of years education. ago oh sorry I, I was this is Becky. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. one i did something similar with um at ila a few years ago and i'm still seeing ramifications of it that is exactly what you guys are saying um so we did a presentation in ila it was myself Jeannie dilger and a few other people including, I forget her name, but the state representative from Addison, who's a librarian. And we did it with a group called um, You Should Run or some like grassroots organization. And we said, you are a library worker. This is why you need to run for election as a local trustee. I <laughs> and I literally still this week got an email from somebody who's running for like the third time at Schomburg. Again, because she went to that presentation and she's been in contact with me and I get emails constantly because we just made it personal, right? We just were like, you know, when I started at the LaGrange Library, I was 26 years old and I had just become a librarian. And honestly, the reason I joined, I wanted to join was because my goal someday was to get countryside, to get a library and be their director. And what I learned by being on the library board is I did not want to be a director. And that was valuable information. <laughs> but I have so many skills now that I, but but the skills I brought as even a library worker who barely knew anything, right? I was a first time supervisor. I'd been a librarian for like a year. I still brought a perspective to that board as a, you know somebody who worked at a library. And we had such success with that personal plea. So I love that idea. Like why, why are you good? And maybe we want to do a program at ILA, you know, like Hallie can use some of the stuff she wrote like from Rails, like why you should join any board you know, not just rails, but anything, um, why your skills are good and encourage us to get more library workers out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. Well, the survey will be coming and, uh, you know, maybe we can talk about it again too mm -hmm. as things occur to you. So, because we really do want to do a better job. Okay. Um... So we'll move to uh, number nine, which is unfinished business and- We don't have any. Okay. So then we will go to number 10, which is board development, um, which is advocacy opportunities for the Rails board members. And- um, Me again, yep. Which is the- So you've heard a lot about advocacy today. Mm -hmm. um, the you know my library is we certainly um, encourage you to look at the website um, and see if there are items there that will help you and I mean what we hope that you do as board members is in the job description is you know talk about rails at your local meetings give reports I know a lot of you do that um, I think you know at our um, at our advocacy meetings and then also at our um, meetings with IL, we talk about how we, you know, library, we all, all types of libraries need each other. And I think if you uh, locally, you know, talk to your, and I know Michael, you've, you've talked about this a lot, you know, working with the local school library to develop relationships mm -hmm. and advocate for them. Um, 
AOA is always a good source as well because they have a lot of good issue updates. Um, but I, and I think you know the main thing, and I, I did want to talk about this today too because this was something that came up at the advocacy committee yesterday. Was the ILA the meetups are about to start next week? Obviously, that's a great way to advocate for your libraries, libraries in general, for rails. Um, so I'm hoping that between the board and the, all the board members and all the staff, we can cover all of them virtually. I, have, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the schedule. I'm already signed up for South and West. Okay. That's my library. Okay. I'll be at those. And we're happy to support your attendance. It's very, it's only $15 it's this year. And it, no, is Rails an institutional member? It's free now this year if you're, because it's virtual. Institutional members of ILA. Oh, you're right. It's free. My so, goodness. okay. So it's there free. There you go. We are, none of us have any excuse at all, mm -hmm. right? Because <laughs> we usually only send like one person to each, and we're sending as many as we can. Yeah. So I'm. It is. I mean, we're happy to facilitate this in any way, but we we certainly hope that you all attend. And um, if you want to let us know what ones you're you're going to, we can make sure that we do. Um, you know, cover the. Uh, cover the landscape, the geography. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is anybody si has anybody besides Becky already signed up? So I'm actually helping to coordinate South. Well so I guess I'll, you're I'll, pretty well signed up. I'll definitely up. be there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be attending South because you know nice <laughs> I can I attend anything. I just kinda wanted to wait to see what everyone else was uh, planning on doing. I think well. I think I'll ask Emily to send out a, uh, you know, a schedule, a spreadsheet, whatever. There, there's one on the 29th, February 5th. This is on the ILA website. February 8th. They yeah. The last one was on March 5th. They're pretty much once or twice a week all through February. Um, so we will send out a schedule. Yeah, and I wanted to talk to you about that. So okay. I can go to as many as I need. Okay, to great. Yes, and the, you know, the more the merrier. That's for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's it'll be interesting to see how these go. It's not the same as you know sitting next to them at lunch, but on the other hand, I think. Yeah. We'll, do we think we're going to get more legislative get participation? I, you know, Becky, I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm really hoping. I've been I've been I've been making phone calls since that feels more personal than an email. So I've been calling folks and calling other library folks I know who may have a personal relationship with the legislature right. have asking them to make a phone call. I just, you know, since, since we can't do the in-person greeting, I hear phone calls. Just, it's, it seems to be a better chance to make a connection than an email. Oh, did you get Mark Marie Newman yet? Because I bet she'd go. I can contact her. The new, she replaced Lipinski for for Congress. I, I have actually asked someone else. I mean, I, so my strategy is ILA provides great resources yeah. for this, and they'll actually say which libraries are like which legislative district. So I'll reach to someone and say, hey, you're in this legislative district. Would you like to reach out to this legislature because they're in your in, in that district? So I she can, lives in LaGrange, so LaGrange oh, area. Oh, so well, then actually, you're, you're an excellent. That's, she just did a she just did a rally at the train station. My daughter went the other day. So, so that, I'll, I'll try to get her because yeah, she she's dying to go to these things. Oh, that'd be oh, excellent. Thing, all right. Yeah. Should we and just go ahead and sign up for them if we see ones that like I want to I think I should probably attend the the uh, Northwestern one. Should I just yep. go ahead and sign up yep. and then do yep. I, should I sign up a, as a representative of rails on in that case or for my own organization. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, obviously, our own advocacy committee is, is like our great advocates. They've really led the way and I, I want again, you know, um, I know Percy's not here today. Um, Tom was here. I don't. Tom's here. He's he here? he's in. Peoria. Oh, he's in East Peoria. That's right. Uh, Tom and and Percy are both on the trustee forum, which is great. Um, so I think we've really upped our upped our game, but we can always do better. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you all very much. We'll send the schedule out, and we'll. I, I know ILA is working on some talking points, as we as we had already said. Happy to answer any questions. Jenna, the one, uh, and Sarah, the one on President's Day for the Northwest, yes. I believe, it's always well attended if you haven't attended that one before. Um, so um, that would probably be the one in, in our area. 
Um, North Suburban. Yeah, officially. North Suburban. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, that's been going on for decades. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other comments, questions on that? Okay. Uh, okay, so we'll move on uh, to number 11, Rails board member report. Does anyone have any news to share about their uh, area or library? Uh, this is Alex. Hi, Alex. Uh, at New Lenox, we voted to go fine free back in November. We are working on finalizing some of the details for that and uh, expect that policy to go into effect in, in March. Um, we're very excited about being able to eliminate economic barriers to access. Great. That's awesome. That's awesome, yes, congratulations. Anyone else have any uh, announcements about their library or area? Okay. Um, okay, so we'll move on to number 12, agenda building for the next Rails board meeting. The next Rails board meeting will be held on Friday, February 26th at 1 p.m. Um, the items for the agenda include an update for the Rails EDI initiatives, and board members Sarah and Jennifer will report on academic libraries um, with some trends and challenges. Anything else that we should discuss? anything right now. Okay. Um, I, could I just toss out an idea? Yes. Sure. Okay. I have presented numerous times at ILA, um, and how I've done it is just I've asked people, sometimes random people, but I'm ready to write a proposal. Um, and then since we've been talking about, you know, talking about joining rails and spreading the word out, how would anyone feel about joining me and starting a group or a proposal and speaking about rails, but invite other people like from ILA, from the Monarch Committee, different library related committees to talk a little bit about their organizations. And I know there are booths there at the different conferences and that, but I just think it would be an up close and personal so people could ask questions, what it's like, what's been your experience, you know, would you encourage me to join, that type of thing. I don't know, we could talk about it, I don't know how you feel, I'm just laying this on you, it just popped into my head. But it's a very, I don't know, I find it a very good venue to speak at ILA, because so as I say, I've done it numerous times. And just have a committee of about five people, different people from different organizations, and then just, just talk about your specific organization, whether it's, as I say, the Coddles, Monarch, Lincoln, ILA, um, IRC, any of those committees. I think that's a great idea, Diane. The, the, I think the only, the only challenge would be figuring out how not to include like a hundred organizations, you yeah. know, but, uh, but I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Well, the main ones, they're usually present there. Um, I, oh yeah. I'm, I'm half teasing. It just, you know, I just was looking at the, at the board and you're all involved in your own. I mean, there's, there's no rock, there's, you know, different, there's ILA, there's IACRL, but that, I think it's a great idea. I think, you know, see who wants to join in and, and go for it. Great recruitment for everybody. Cool. Thank you. So if you're interested, contact Diane. Yep. Okay, we're gonna move to item number 13, which is a closed session. So the board will move into closed session to discuss matters pertaining to the litigation as per uh, number uh, number five of the Illinois Compiled Statutes, uh, chapter 120, paragraph number two, section C1, which states uh, the exceptions, uh, which is a public body may hold closed meetings to consider the following subjects, litigation. When an action against affecting or behalf of the particular public body has been filed and is put pending before a court or administrative tribunal 
or when the public body finds that an action is probable or imminent, in which case the basis for the finding shall be recorded and entered into the minutes of the closed meeting. May I have a motion to move into closed session? So I'm oh, Sarah no. McConchase. Oh, Sarah can have it. <laughs> Sarah, do I have a second? Second, Paul Mills, I'll second. Uh, do we have to vote on this? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, Emily, will you call roll? Oh, you're, we can't hear you, Emily. Yes. You were muted. Can you start over again, yeah. Emily? I, I started. Sarah McCone Chase. Oh, yes. <laughs> Jennifer McIntosh. Yes. Paul Mills. Yes. Jenna McLuisi. Yes. Scott Poynton. Yes. Becky Spratford. Yes. Thomas Stagg. Yes. Beth Teppen. Yes. Alex Vancina. Yes. Sue Busenbark. Yes. Ellie Cox. Yes. Diane Hollister. Yes. Chris Kenny. Yes. And Michael Campbell. Yes. So for the record, can we repeat those mo that motion to move back in, please? This is Diane, so moved. This is Scott, I'll second. Thank you. Emily, will you please call roll? Yes. Paul Mills. Yes. Jenna Nemec-Louisi. Yes. Scott Poynton. Yes. Becky Spratford. Yes. Thomas Stagg. Yes. Beth Teppen. Yes. Alex Vancina. Yes. Sue Busenberg. Yes. Ellie Cox. Yes. Diane Hollister. Yes. Chris Kenny. Yes. Sarah McCone Chase. Yes. Jennifer McIntosh. Yes. And Michael Campbell. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there were no actions to follow up uh, to the closed session, so we'll move to adjournment. Um, thank you very much for your attendance today. Um, and remember, our next meeting is February 26th, and I hereby adjourn this meeting at 2.55 p.m. Yes.